Well, welcome, my beautiful members and subscribers. I, I am in no um, physical position <laughs> to take a picture of myself today and um, show it to you folks. I just look absolutely terrible. But welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. And I'm Antonio, and I'm so pleased to have you here. Instead, there's the desk, and there's a very, very colorful, <sighs> beautiful guy, Miguel. And um, Miguel and I have had a conversation earlier today. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, I'm not even going to get into that. Anyways, I wanted to speak to you folks about um, this whole domain um, situation. It caught my attention. And um, one of the things that caught my attention was I thought, well, maybe what I should do, because I'm always looking at a different way to um, bring this sort of information to you folks I sort of thought you know what I'll just explain because I also had to do just a little bit of um, research explain how this whole domain thing works because I, I own a couple of my own domains and um, it's pretty easy to do uh, but I wanted to sort of just follow the process again to refresh my my mind uh, so that is um, coming up, but something curious happened. I one of the main thing got a, sort of caught my attention. I went and I took uh, a quick screenshot of the UK and the Canadian uh, because they had also there was also a. Um, American or uh, Rivera, sorry, American Rivera Orchard dot CA, which is Canadian, and of course the dot UK from the UK. And the Canadian version of it was quite Canadian, let's call it that way. It was very, um, in some ways apologetic, and what it did was to highlight. Canadian charities that otherwise doesn't get a lot of um, attention. And it basically said, um, and I'm paraphrasing here from my memory, uh, apologizing to the Duchess of Sussex and saying, we hope that, um, you know, you understand why we've taken this domain because, you know, we would like, you know, these charities for people to consider them also to, you know, help them or donate to them. They do some magnificent work. And they actually also on their site sort of invited the Duchess and said, you know, we would hope um, in your understanding that you would sort of say, it's okay if you folks take the um, .ca. Um, but as I was getting this report ready, and I went back and checked, it's gone. It's completely been now hijacked by the UK version of the website. So either, and this is allegedly, the UK website realized that someone owned the Canadian domain decided to approach them, offer them a good amount of d'argent, um, you know, currency. And obviously they said yes. Oh boy. Anyways, let's just get into our topic. But just before we do that, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our new subscribers. Thank you so very much. Um, I love how little by little 
um, people are discovering the channel and deciding to stick around and subscribe or uh, become a member. I so appreciate that and, 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 and thank you. Thank you very much. I am trying my very best to say stay, not say, 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 but to stay consistent. Um, I will explain on another day uh, some of the rationale or reasons that um, I come up or block, block. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, blockages that I, I come up with. It's no excuse, but I, I think I, I, you know, I like to be transparent. Um, and for you folks to understand what goes on behind the curtain. All right. With all that said, for real, here we go. Acquiring a domain name is a fundamental step for establishing an online presence for many businesses or individuals. A domain name serves as a unique address on the internet where people can access your website. Here's a uh, sort of simple, at least I think it is, <laughs> um, explanation of the process of acquiring a domain. The the differences between, let's say, a domain extensions like .com or .ca, which is Canada, or .uk, which would be um, the UK, etc., and the implications of domain ownership, um, especially in relation to a person's business. So, I'll start it from like the very sort of principle of all. So let's all pretend like we know nothing at all about how domain works or any of that so first how to acquire a domain name to acquire a domain name you typically go through the following steps first you do some research um, identify the domain name you want tools like um, who is so w h o i s databases can help determine if a domain is already taken. Domain Registrar. Once you've selected a available name, you must purchase it through a domain registrar. So there are a couple. Um, the one I've used, for example, is such as GoDaddy. I know, such a weird name, right? <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's just my mind. <laughs> what a weird name. Go, go Daddy. Um, sorry. Okay, I've got to stop. This is ridiculous. I can't stop laughing. All right. Now that I've retained my composure. Composure. That's a word? No, composure is a word. Not composure. Okay, enough. Before I get a laughing fit again. Um, so, let's get serious face back on. Um, domain registers um, such as GoDaddy, also name Cheap or others. Registers are organizations accredited by the Internet Corporations of Assigned Names and Numbers. Um, I-C-A-N-N. -N, so, I as in India, C as in Charlie, A as in Apple, N as in November, N as in November, to sell domain names. So registration. Um, during the registration, you'll choose the registration period, um, usually one of the one or 10 years, and provide registrar with contact information. This information is used um, in the WHOIS, W-H-O-I-S database. Renewal. Keep in mind that domain registration is not permanent. You must renew your domain registration before it expires or you risk losing it. So, for example, I had this great idea of doing conferences um, that were um, bringing women together. And I wanted to call it 
well, I'm not going to say what I wanted to call it, but the word her was in it, H-E-R. So I had an idea and I named the conference her something and I put the name in um, the search engine in order to see if anyone owned it or, or anything like that. No one owned it. So then I went to GoDaddy and I said, I want to purchase this name. Um, so her, whatever, let's, let's just say it was um, her empowerment, right? So her empowerment.ca, which is the Canadian um, um, engine site or um, domain. So it would be her empowerment.ca. So it, it would be a Canadian based domain. And then um, GoDaddy would basically say, hey, by the way, there is herempowerment.com available. Would you like to purchase that? Or they will say, hey, there is um, herempowerment.uk available or .gt available or something like that, right, uh, for specific countries. And then you can decide whether you wanted to buy it or purchase or not. So each one of those domain would have a particular price, depending on whether this was searched for a lot or anything like that, the price can actually go up. So you can have domains, for example, um, herempowerment.net, that would be, let's say $20 to purchase for a year or two, right? But then you'll have herempowerment.com, it would be $1,000 to purchase for a year or two. So it differs depending on the, the, what they perceived as the, the sort of demand for that um, name or that domain. Also, if someone already has the domain, you can, through uh, the provider like GoDaddy, and um, negotiate to have the person, you know, sell you the um, domain. Um, so that's, that's a possibility also, right? Um, next, uh, differences between domain extensions. So, you know, there is the .com. So, for example, if we're looking at um, American Riviera um, Orchard .com, versus, you know, the .ca or the .uk, etc. So domain extensions, also known as top-level domains, right? So top-level domains, TLD, um, can signify the nature and ger um, geographic association of a website. So, for example, .com, um, originally intended for commercial entities, .com is the most widely used and recognized um, TLD, right? So top level domain. It doesn't have geographical recognition. So it doesn't say, oh, well, this is the UK or this is from Singapore. This is from um um, Lithuania or something like that. Um, so it has, um, doesn't have geographical restrictions, making it a universal choice for businesses targeting a global audience. So anyone um, targeting a global audience, you want a .com, period. Um, country code, um, con country code LTD or LTDs, extensions like um, .ca for Canada and .uk for United Kingdom are country specific and are often used by businesses targeting customers in those countries. They can sort of boost local SEO and help it um, um, help, help, help it basically ap appear in more relevant in local search um, results. Other generic L, um, other generic um, TLDs um, 
So extensions like .org for organizations or NET, um, originally for network services, and newer ones like .info, .biz, .biz, um, etc. serve specific functions or are used for marketing and branding purposes. Um, also, like for example, if you're trying to, because some people have actually register their names like Antonio blah 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 and the dot com might be a thousand dollars and you know that Antonio may say yeah no but then it may say Antonio blah 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 dot net is three dollars and it's like well I'll purchase that so you own that domain um, for a year, two, three, whatever um, the amount of time that you've purchased it for. Um, so implications of domain ownership. If anyone else owns a TLD variation of your domain, so let's say brand, it may create brand confusion. If you own a .com, right, like um, American Riviera Orchard.com, um, but another entity owns the .ca or the .uk, it can lead to confusion among your customers, especially if those um, entities are in similar industries. So sometimes, um, I want to use the word con artists, but some very, you know, um, Speculous, what's that word? Um, speculous, no, um, spe what's the word? Um, it's at the tip of my tongue, anyways. I'll come back to it. I know you folks know what's word I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm thinking in my head, and I can see it, I can actually envision the word, I just can't say it. Um, you know, some, some, someone who, and this has happened a lot with. Um, artists, right? Like when an an artist or a very well known, recognized, famous person, let's say, may have a child or um, announce, make an announcement, people may actually go out and purchase the domain of that person's name. For example, um, let's say Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter. I think her name is Apple. So. Let's say um, Apple Poultro. Someone, I'm sure, owns that domain. And if Apple was to ever want to, you know, buy her domain back um, or buy that domain, she would have to go to the person who owns it and they could charge whatever they want to charge for it, right? So many times there's people out there who are waiting to hear um, famous people announce their businesses or the name of their child or something, and then they just purchase that um, domain. And with the idea that, you know, the famous or popular or known person may one day want to have that domain um, for their business, their child, their, 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 their whatever that they're trying to do so um so just it does create brand confusion um sometimes because let's say for example with american riviera orchard and is selling wonderful delicious jams right and the website in the uk or in canada or in south africa decides that they're going to sell um, strawberries and um, apricots and, um, I don't know, bananas and, and that sort of stuff in order to make the jams or also sell the jams, but um, packages package differently. Uh, it's, 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 there's a sort of very thin legal line around all of that. So, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I know there's a very thin legal line around 
what one is able to do and what one may get away with and so on. So the SEO and web traffic, um, different L, uh, sorry, different um, TLD line around all of that. So, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I know there's a very thin legal line around what one is able to do and what one may get away with and so on. So the SEO and web traffic, um, different L, uh, sorry, different um, TLD can compete for the same keywords and potentially split the web traffic. For example, if you primarily serve Canadian customers, but only own the .com, um, users might inadvertently end up at the .ca site if they assume the business is locally oriented, right? So, and legal, legal and brand protection. Legally, you might face challenges if another entity owns a um, TLD of your brand name particularly if they have legitimate reasons to use it, such as a familiar brand name in a different region. And this has happened. Like, I think there's been some really famous cases um, where someone owned a domain for a very long time and then a big corporation starts to use it or something. And, you know, it's taken to court. So I actually have some examples here for you. So suppose you're own, you own a bake a bakery in the fantastic city of Toronto, Canada, um, called Golden Wheat Bakery. Did you, did you like that? Golden Wheat Bakery. I was thinking of. No, I'm not going to say it. Um, okay, I'm going to say it. There is a very wealthy family um, who owns like supermarkets and stuff and they own a very famous bakery um that does bread and okay moving on so toronto called golden wheat bakery and you owned golden wheat bakery.ca but not .com if a us based company leader opens with the same name and acquires golden wheat bakery.com your customers might end up at their site, mistaking it for yours. This can lead to loss of business and brand delusion. Um, not, not delusion as in, you know, you're seeing things, but um, del delusion as in diminish. Um, you, you know what I mean? I'm just not pronouncing it correctly. That's why I'm trying to like make it right folks i'm still sick okay so <laughs> be nice um <laughs> and i'm trying to get this done um while i still have good internet i think everyone here at this establishment that i'm at this is asleep so the the internet is like better right now so i'm trying to get this done and um edited and posted so you can have this up at a decent time all right so let me give you a second example if you're a uk tech startup right and own a um dot uk domain but not the dot com international customers might default to the dot com version assuming it's your global platform only to find it's unrelated, potentially causing customers frustration and impacting your brand's global reach. Um, so it does it does sort of matter, right? Um, but the important thing is that American Riviera Orchard has the dot com. That's the most important one. I would say um, when choosing a domain, Consider your business goals, 
target audience and geographical factors. Owning multiple relevant TLDs can be a strategic move to protect your brand and ensure that customers and political, um, so political, <laughs> I see a P and I think political, um, potential clients find you easily, regardless of their location or assumptions about your domain. In today's digital age, the right domain strategy can significantly impact your brand, online presence, and success. So I would say, you know, anything that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex does, um, it's going to be imitated, it's going to be um, diluted in some ways. Yeah, that's just the word, diluted, um, not delusion, diluted in some ways. And fakers are going to try and capitalize on their notoriety and their success. So it's on us. It's on us to be vigilant. It's on us to know what we're purchasing, where we're purchasing it from, and not to be conned. So just be mindful, be careful before you input your, you know, your um, credit card digits into the um, internet and make sure you're buying it from the site that you intend to purchase it from. I mean, I think we are all pretty vigilant here in this community. So when these fake sites show up or so on, we will obviously make sure all of us are aware um, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to say it. I even, when the Instagram page came up, I was on the right site. I looked at it. I loved it. I, as you know, did a video on it and I subscribed to it. And then I went back and I realized I subscribed to one of the fake ones. <laughs> it was the wrong one. And I was like, oh Damn it, how could I have been? And it was because I wasn't paying much attention, right? I just saw American Riviera Orchard and just clicked on it rather than really paying attention to see that it had that blue little verified check mark. Anyways, folks, I wanted to just explain that to all of us because I think sometimes things come up and we don't exactly know the background, how it may work. And um, I tend to always want to find out, well, how did this happen? Or um, what does this mean? Or what is it? How can I explain this? Because I'm always curious. I'm always curious about how things work, especially things I don't know or understand. And I thought, well, let me bring it to um, you folks also, just in case. So we're all up to date. And that's it for this whole thing on the um, domain. <sighs> what a day. I think I it's time for me to crawl into bed. Um... And I think hopefully this will be downloaded in the morning. And because the internet connections are awful, folks, and it takes forever. But, uh, oh, I've got a story to tell you folks before you go. So, you know the ride that I took from point A to point B, <laughs> where it was. So the minivan I was in, um, it's quite a little minivan, right? And there were six of us. Now, with six people in the minivan, I was comfortable. It was all right. Uh, that's why I was able to, you know, send that message and so on for our playlist. And then the driver stopped and picked up two more people. And I was like, all right, I'm still kind of okay. This is good. So I was 
in the second row and <laughs> seats. Folks, I don't mean to laugh, but it's like, it's either I laugh or I cry. So the second seat, basically it's me and another person, right? And that's enough. Like, you can't really fit anyone else. Well, you could, like a child maybe. And then he stopped again. And I went, is this a joke? And I'm thinking, I thought when I booked this and I paid for it, they told me there wouldn't be any more than like six people on the minivan. <laughs> okay, ready for it? Are you really ready for it? <sighs> there were 12 people on the minivan. This tiny little minivan. So, I don't even want to explain to you. My stomach aches. My stomach is all like really hard, right? And the injections that I took, um, it kind of eased the pain. And the pills that I'm taking is for that hardness and pain to kind of help the digestive system and so on. And I don't need to get into any more details. But I am not a very tall person, but I'm tall enough that my knees were very much so into this, the back of the seat in front of me. So every time the van moved, the sort of cords or coiled or whatever in that seat digged into my knee. I found not only Jesus, I, I found Okay, before I get into in, and offend any religious um, person and, and, and religion, I'm not going to say it, but I'll say I, 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 I found God um, over and over and over again in that four hour <laughs> minivan ride. I prayed. I asked for patience. I asked for God to like help my body. <laughs> I know I'm laughing. But folks, if you know anything about me, there's two things. I either laugh about a situation or I cry about it. And I'm going to choose to laugh because if I cry about this, <laughs> I think I might not stop. <laughs> <sighs> That's your update. So I do hope you found this uh, domain thing. Um, if you weren't aware of, of, of it or, or had questions about it, I hope this clarifies anything. Look, the Duchess of Sussex, the beautiful, the wonderful, the intelligent, the marvelous Meghan Markle and the Prince. Prince Harry, they know what they're doing. I trust them. And this is, this is really nothing, I think. And if it is, it is. Let them do what they want to do. Let these people do what they want to do. Um, people who support Meghan and Harry know where to go, know where to find them, know the things that they support. And... If anyone makes a mistake and ends up at a site that they, you know, shouldn't be, I think they'll recognize it. Or, you know, like me, going to the wrong <laughs> Instagram site. Well, within 24 hours, I realize, am I on the right site? And go, oh, shoot, I'm not. And change to the right site. Okay? Much love. Take care. I'll talk to all of you soon again, until we speak again. Ciao for now.